I've seen uh, elk teeth and fox teeth, uh, and um, I've heard that some people use human teeth. So uh, I have one made out of my my tooth, my wisdom tooth. It's huge. Um, <laughs> it's um, and it's a particular appropriate season for for that being Halloween and October and all that. So um, his the other pieces like the the chain here is yes. that that's another uh, that's style. another um, gothic piece um, right there is that watch fob uh, it's copying uh, I guess aspects of gothic architecture in some of the the ornamentation there I I've seen them described as gothic um, right. but I'm not exactly sure what goes into that um, we have the watch chain plain gold um, gold filled chain. How does that attach and to the... Or there's it... a specific buttonhole. So there's a buttonhole right there. Okay. And that's a little T-bar. So oh. it's just a little bar on the chain and it buttons, buttons through. And there's no button coming through that buttonhole. That buttonhole is specifically there for, for... a chain. Oh, okay. Uh, so that just comes over. That's the, the watch right there. So there was usually some sort of um, pendant or something that would be meant to, to have yes, there. Yes, it was uh, another way of uh, dis display ornamentation. So the pendant or uh, fob, as it's called, uh, was very common. Uh, you often see just plain chains uh, there to secure the watch uh, so that it doesn't fall and uh, break. Uh, so that if you do drop it, you're, you know that it's safe. Um, uh, but it was just another form of ornamentation. And I also, I have mine there, which is a double chain, so it has two chains going oh. from either side, and then two fobs actually, two little pendants. So would, why would they have a double, is that what uh, You can have uh, a watch or a key, pen knife, oh, okay. uh, for two different sides. Oh, interesting. So it's just securing more objects to your, your chain. And then I know um, on display here at the museum, we've got um, collars like this that were detachable. So can you get into, is, is this, a, this yes. is a detachable? This is a, a stiff collar. Uh, it's detachable for that reason. Is it's very hard to launder if they're uh, attached to the shirt. Right. Uh, you'd end up possibly getting the whole shirt just as stiff, which would be quite impractical, impractical and uncomfortable. Uh, but this is uh, an imperial collar or standing collar it's about two and a half inches high, and it buttons on with, uh, you have a separate little uh, brass button or stud. Uh, one goes in the back, uh, which is, goes through two layers, and is fairly short, and then you have a much longer one that goes through all four layers of the shirt, and the two layers, um, uh, the two layers of the shirt and the two layers of the collar, uh, and that fastens it on. And in much the same way, you would have had detachable cuffs, uh, Cuffs could have been already attached uh, to the shirt itself. Uh, I've heard that uh, for royalty, it was uh, a sign of uh, their status to always have attached cuffs to their shirt. And that way, each shirt had to be laundered to get those cuffs stiff. But the detachable cuffs were quite common, and there were different mechanisms, uh, both studs, cuff links, and uh, cuff holders that all uh, held those on. So would the collar and cuffs would be starched differently than? Yes, yeah, so the shirt could be laundered and starched, uh, but these are four layers of fabric in the collar to hold more starch in there. And then uh, they're put through uh, an intense process of presses and uh, that both uh, flatten and then shape the collar and also polish it so it's smooth so that uh, if it was the plain cotton without polishing, it would act like sandpaper. All the little hardened fibers would stick out. Uh, but as soon as it's polished, it's a very smooth, shiny surface. Uh, the one I'm wearing here is uh, starched and polished. Uh, so it's really actually uh, quite comfortable wearing it. As long as you stand up straight, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't slouch over. So, because um, we have uh, little bars of bluing. Yes. So that. How would that So be? that bluing comes into the process in that uh, starch can often yellow fabrics, uh, and fa yellow uh, white fabrics will yellow naturally as well. 
uh, without starch. Uh, but bluing happens to balance the colors, and so it counteracts the white, and it comes out as a bright white, or sometimes uh, if you add too much bluing, it'll come out as a very, very bright blue, sort of white, sort of, you can see uh, the blue in that white. Um, funny, you'd think if you're adding blue to yellow that you might get green, but uh, it just makes it just makes it look more white. So. Oh, okay, interesting. So, um, so this is attached, and then the shirt below is just like a cotton. Yes, that would be a cotton shirt. Uh, the shirt here uh, is not actually a full shirt uh, because I didn't have a shirt that would fit this body. So I've just used actually a fancy bib underneath to uh, appear like a shirt, and those were common as well. They were worn over top of. Uh, a simple plain shirt uh, to make it appear a little fancier, you could get stripes. Uh, collars and cuffs also came in different patterns if you wanted. Um, so you could even have a plain white shirt, but the collar and cuffs, the only two parts that really showed, and maybe a little bit of the, the bib in front, uh, would be striped and it would look like you were wearing a striped shirt for more informal occasions. Interesting. So did those ever, so stripes was kind of the main, if it was going to vary to any sort of pattern. Uh, stripes, but also uh, other geometrics. I've seen triangles or squares put around. I've never seen polka dots. Never oh. seen polka dots in uh, Victorian um, collars, but um, maybe there's an image out there I'll, I'll find tomorrow. But, um, but uh, stripes, uh, squares, I've seen where they have a stripe and then they add little squares or diamonds on top of the stripes in different patterns. Okay. Uh, so a lot of different uh, options there. And then I guess the, and then the tie was another area to sort of get different patterns and to get Patterns, really... colors, um, tartans being obviously very popular, um, especially in probably the early 1890s, especially uh, late 1880s, uh, there was definitely a little more tartans. And then you have another tie that's yes. sort of... This one's a little more eccentric, but this would have also been quite common for ties. Is uh, This is an original from the 1890s, and it's kind of this uh, red uh, and black sort of psychedelic yes. model pattern. <laughs> um, I tried this one in here, and it just it looked way too 1970s to me, or 80s sort of yeah. bad television drama costume. Yes. Um, so, <laughs> but they did. They could go rather eccentric with. But yeah, quite patterns. eccentric with patterns. Interesting. Um, you see quite eccentric patterns even in vests sometimes, especially earlier. Um, this one's particularly uh, sort of toned down, but still has some uh, detail work to it with the, the small red dot. Um, yeah, I'm I'm wearing purple tartan, uh, which. Uh, again, tartan vests would have been uh, popular for some. It's a little more flashy, um, but purple was also a very popular color. Oh, was it? Yeah, yes. in the 1890s uh, specifically? Or? 1890s I've seen purple, but particular 1870s, 60s, there was a lot of purple. Interesting. But suits were usually... they Suits were uh, usually dark colors or... Um, uh, uh, blacks, dark blues, browns, uh, grays, uh, but they could go into lighter shades in uh, summer, but also you had uh, for tweeds, there was actually still quite a, quite a few different colors and dark green suits, bottle green, but there's always exceptions out there um, with uh, some of these things. Um, I've seen uh, a pale blue suit in um, wool from, I think it was French. So. So when, when you say greens, um, what sort of dyes were they using for to get some of these colors, or were they nat sort of natural uh, dyes? Well, or? after the 1850s, they have chemical dyes, uh, but uh, before that, they had a whole range of natural dyes. Right. Um, black was uh, particularly um, prestigious because it took so much dye. Um, black was often, and you'll actually find a lot of Victorian coats which have now gone green with fading, but were originally black. Um, because, and that's because it's actually a green dye, but they've used so much of it, um, and it's gotten so dark, it's become black. Uh, and then with the sun fading, it goes back to the green now. So how would they 
wash something like that, or would the dye come out? So uh, with all of these pieces, uh, you probably wouldn't have washed them. Uh, for any cleaning, uh, what uh, my books mention is brushing suits down. You would have had a clothes brush, and you would have brushed the whole suit down. Uh, for any spots, um, this suit does actually show some signs where it's got some spots right about there, where you would have spot cleaned that. Uh, I don't clean any of my antique coats. I'll air them out and I'll brush them, uh, but I don't don't try and wash any of those spots. Um, you could, uh, they do mention uh, in some books, washing garments very, very carefully, like trousers that have been absolutely uh, soiled and muddied and things like that, that you could um, take out the linings and the pockets uh, and interfacing and then just soak them and let the um, dirt rise out of them in the water and do that a couple times. They also mention adding salt to the water so the dyes won't run. Oh, okay. Uh, but they say that that's ex an extreme uh, case uh, and not to be done often. Right, so maybe that's so it's, that it's airing them out, uh, spot cleaning, brushing. Uh, that's pretty much how the cleaning goes. There are specific garments called washing vests or washing trousers uh, or like linen suits, which could have been uh, washed and laundered. Uh, and then starched uh, because they don't have the same interfacings the wool garments have, uh, so they do need some some starch to help give them body and shape. Uh, and that was particularly for summer, where uh, you'd be sweating into your garments and also being white and light colors, they might get dirty. Uh, so they had.